Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to uh, Trinity Church for a fine morning of worship together. It's a privilege to uh, be here and to, uh, and to worship together. I have uh, three announcements. Uh, one being is uh, that on April 30th in the barn at 10 a.m., uh, that is uh, on a Saturday, there's going to be a special uh, group. If your life has been affected by change or loss, if you would like to feel more connected, or if you would like some great fellowship, join us for a morning of refreshment and fun. So as I just mentioned, there will be refreshment serves. It should be a good time together uh, of, of fellowship and uh, talking together. Next, next Sunday will be one service at 8 a.m. And that is because uh, it's going to be followed by a, a brunch and then going out for the various love projects together. Uh, so be prepared for that. Uh, I think if you come at 1045, uh, you'll be ready to leave with us <laughs> going on the, uh, on, onto the projects. And then in two weeks, we're going to be having a, a special uh, photo project that we're beginning. Uh, so come prepared to have photos taken. Um, and that'll be in Mother's Day, starting on Mother's Day. So that's in two weeks. That's a reminder for all of you kids to uh, be thinking about what you're doing for your mom as well. So if we could all stand and uh, start our call to worship. Death has been swallowed up in victory. There, thine is the glory. Risen conquering sun, endless is the victory thou over death has won. We sing unto you, O Lord, with songs of gladness, death has lost its sting. Come, let us worship the Lord, the author and giver of our, of our life, our creator, our sus sustainer, our savior, and our God, for the Lord lives and reigns over all the earth. We worship you, O Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Unite our hearts together in joyful praise as we worship you in spirit and in truth as your covenant people, amen. Oh, my. 
Because of you um, and the sin that you removed from us, we can be close to you. Um, we have been drawn close to you and that you continue to do that work in us. Bless us and keep us this day, we pray. Bless the rest of our service. Amen. Amen. Please greet one another with the love of Christ. Well, welcome to church today. It's the uh, second Sunday of Easter, and uh, every Sunday is a Sunday to celebrate the resurrection of Christ, and uh, certainly this is a day that we just, we, we continue to rejoice in what he has done for us. Well, some of you have been uh, mowing your grass. I, I was watching our neighbors to see them get out their, their mowers, and there's something about that first mow of the year, and Something about the last mow of the year as well, and I won't ask you which one you enjoy the most, but uh, <laughs> the uh, spring is upon us, and we thank God for, for all the wonderful so uh, sounds and, and sights of spring. Let's pray. Lord of all creation, we thank you so much that you have called us to be new creations in Christ, and, and we thank you for your grace that has uh, saved us through faith, and we thank you, Lord, for the gift of faith that you've given us. And thank you, Lord, that we're in a relationship with you and, and with one another as brothers and sisters, and that we're on this journey, uh, this journey together to advance your kingdom in this world, 
and to uh, enjoy your presence and to hear your voice and to obey you as, as the good shepherd. Uh, we pray that we would be a flock that is uh, not resistant to your will or, or deaf to your voice, but we would be listening carefully to all that you call us to do and for who you are and all the truth you want to speak into our lives. We pray that we'd be listening throughout the service as we sing songs and spiritual songs, as we pray, as we listen and participate in the reading of Scripture. Lord, as we uh, uh, hear your word preached and as we look to you to apply it in our life, Father, may you be glorified in our lives and in this service. As we pray, we pray for the people around the world and we continue to pray for the people of the Ukraine. Father, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking to, to see and to listen to the news uh, day by day to hear of more destruction and more lives that have been taken and more aggression. And, and Father, hear our prayer for, for the people of Ukraine that are fighting for their country. Uh, Lord, thank you for the many nations around the world that are, are coming to the aid of the people of Ukraine. We pray for peace peace in that part of the world. We pray for peace around the world and other nations as well uh, where there is war and rumors of war. Father, we pray uh, for missionaries around the world. We, we lift up uh, various missionaries and, and we think of, of Will and Julia Dickerson in Hungary, uh, not too far from the Ukraine. Father, hear our prayers for them and and not only the, the mission that they're doing there, but their own physical challenges that they, they face for Will as he faces, uh, you know, re recovery uh, from, from uh, prostate surgery. Father, hear our prayers for him and for his dad that is now, uh, now in a uh, care facility. Hear our prayers for Butch Dickerson. Father, we thank you for our Sunday school teachers, and we thank you for all those that teach your word in various capacities here at Trinity. Uh, we pray for our small group ministry, that it would grow and expand, and people would be added to the numbers, and new small groups would be formed as well. Hear our prayer as we, uh, as we come together, and we fellowship together, and we study your word. Father, as we pray, uh, we look over our bulletin, and we see a long list of names of people um, that uh, need our prayers for physical healing in their life and recovery uh, from surgery. We lift up Marge Merrill and Olivia and Victoria and Paul White and Jen Fletcher for Pat and Ken, uh, for Audrey Carroll, for Linda Lawrence's sister Patty, and for, uh, for Ron Golden, for the Debuck Neras, and for Jana's uh, Aunt Barbara. Uh, for Ed's co-worker, Paul Vo and Abby uh, Menendez, for Donna Poynton and Sherry's cousin Arlene and Deborah Lee, and for uh, Deb Lang and Marnie Smith, we pray for Jean Watson and for Art McDonald and Linda Lawrence, and we thank you for her listening week by week. We pray for her and for Jane Dupre's mother, Jessie. Thank you for the progress that she has made and for your mighty hand upon her. We continue to lift her up in our prayers for Katie, for Paul's uh, dad, Stanley. We're thankful that he could join us last week on Easter Sunday. For Dave and Sally Warren. For Bob and Carol Woodford and Kathy Simmons. For Stu and Kim's, Akio's niece, Mackenzie, and their nephew, Tyler. And for Gardner and Christine Peters' brother-in-law, Jason. Father, we thank you for these folks and, and for Maureen as well and, and others. Lord, hear our prayer for, the, uh, for those needing your healing hand. Father, hear us further as we pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Well, before we take up the offering, uh, you've been, if you've been keeping up with the Rooted Together, you see that we have this uh, a photo project that we want to do. We want to get everyone's uh, photograph for a board we're putting in, uh, probably in Fellowship Hall. I need to confirm that with our house committee on the best location for that. Uh, and I had a meeting yesterday, and I'm happy to say that I had one person show up for that meeting, and I'm so, so delighted that Debbie Hartwell is going to work with me as a photographer and help us begin photographing uh, families uh, and then also receiving uh, photos that perhaps you'd like to submit, and we'll begin taking pictures on Mother's Day. I know that may not be the most ideal day. You may have other plans right after church, but then we'll have a Saturday where you can come in and get your picture taken. Uh, with that being said, uh, Debbie and I need some help. Uh, some more, uh, more photographers would be nice. Some people that help, uh, you know, organize this. So if that's something you're willing to help, uh, please let me know, uh, or Debbie Hartwell as well. Deb has special music for us, and the offering is now going to be taken. Let's joyfully... Uh, Serve the Lord as we give.
Good morning. Let's hear God's word. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, and that can be found on page 90 in your pew Bibles. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face, because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into the, a good and spacious land, a land of flowing with milk and honey. The home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cries of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign for you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought out the people from Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Go, assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have been have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, a land of flowing with milk and honey. Our gospel passage is John 10, verses 1 through 33 on page 1,666. John chapter 10. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever come, came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out 
and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this pen, sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up. This command I received from my father. At these words, the Jews were again divided. Many of them said, he is demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, these are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Then came the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them from out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. And the New Testament reading is Hebrews 10. Excuse me, Hebrews 3, 1 through 19. And that can be found on page 1864. Let me uh, get back. Hebrews 3, verses 1 through 19. Therefore, holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future. But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house, and we are his house if we hold on to our courage and hope of which we boast. So, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the desert where your fathers tested and tried me and for 40 years saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. And I said, their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. So to see, brothers, so to see it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is, it, it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first. As has been said, today, if you hear his voice, 
do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the de desert? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their disbelief. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his holy and inspired word. Thank you so much, Diane. <clears throat> if we give a special award for the longest scripture reading, I think you, you'd be right up there. So thank you for your perseverance. <laughs> well, let's pray as we, uh, we get ready to dive into his word for us for this morning. Heavenly Father, we do pray that you would give us listening hearts, that we would hear your voice speaking clearly to us through scripture through the preaching of your word, through any means that you so choose. And we ask, Lord, that the words of, uh, of my mouth and meditations of our hearts would be acceptable and pleasing to you as our, as our God. Bless now the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today we begin a topical series entitled, Hearing the Lord's Voice and Following Him. Nothing is more important and honoring and pleasing to God than doing His will and enjoying His presence in our lives every day. My goal as your pastor is to help move you on to God's agenda, to help you to hear God's voice to help you to use those gifts that God has given you for the advancement of his kingdom as one of his chosen people of grace. Success in carrying forth his mission, his agenda, hinges upon us hearing and obeying the Lord's voice in all areas of our lives. Jesus says these words recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 10, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. They follow me. Hearing the voice of the Lord and obeying him is pivotal to living a God-honoring life, or as Jesus puts it in John 10, a life more abundantly. Life eternal. A life filled with the goodness of God, his peace, his joy, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. My sheep, Jesus says, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Here's the question before us, all right? You ready for it? How can we recognize the voice of the Lord from our own voices or the voices of another? That's what we'll be diving into uh, today and in the next number of weeks. Well, history is littered with the sad accounts of confused and deluded people who claim that God has spoken to them. And they have begun movements or cults like David Koresh and the Branch Davidians of Waco, Texas in the early 1990s, who claimed that God called him, Vernon Howell, a devout Seventh-day Adventist, to change his name to David Koresh and become <clears throat> like David in the Bible with his harem of women to warn his followers of the imminent end of the world. <clears throat> when in fact God wasn't speaking to him, it was a counterfeit. God is speaking to us that we may know him and follow him wherever he sends us. To assist us in that faith journey, we're providing uh, for you each one of these journals. Uh, hopefully you got one coming in. <coughs> it's blank, all right? It's blank intentionally for you to fill in your notes from the sermons, sermon notes, and also the things that God is teaching you over the next number of 12 weeks or so. 
that you as his sheep can, can clearly hear from him and record those things. Now people everywhere from seasoned Christians to new believers in Christ, we all struggle to hear God's voice clearly and consistently. Uh, I've been, uh, remember the first time I heard the Lord's voice very clearly back 49 years ago, <laughs> in April 15th, 1973, when the Lord called me out of a theater seat to walk forward and to stop running away from God in the Translux Theater in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. I went forward hearing his voice and repented of my sins and accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. And I've been on a journey ever since, uh, 49 years ago, to be hearing his voice. I remember when I started seminary back in 1983, I got a book by Mark Verkler on hearing the Lord's voice. Well, I haven't figured it all out. I'm, I'm continuing to learn, and I think if we're honest with one another, uh, we're all seeking to understand, uh, to know his voice. But I have learned to hear his voice more clearly over the years as I grow in my relationship with him. And some of the things God has taught me, I hope to pass on to you as we move through uh, this topic. Well, God says these words in James 4, 8, and it's already on your screen in front of you. God's word says, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Hearing the voice of God begins with a purposeful action on our part to draw near to God so that we may hear him speak to us. And when we draw near to a thrice holy God, we come acknowledging that he is a holy God and we are not. Uh, certainly we saw that example in Exodus when, when Moses was drawn near to God in the burning bush and God said, take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. He recognized that he was before a thrice holy God. When we draw near to God, he, he shows us uh, our sin, and uh, he shows us that he's altogether holy and righteous and good, abounding in love and grace, and we are not. We stand before him unclean with unclean lips. So as we draw near to God, we humbly ask him, Lord, cleanse my hands, cleanse my lips from sin, purify my heart, renew my mind in Christ Jesus, and then to change my double-minded desires directed towards love of pleasure and of selfish independence from, from you and from others. Where self is on the throne, as we draw near to God in confession of our sins and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, cleanse me, then we can say, Lord, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Then we can hear with, with a with clear ears after we have confessed our sins before God and repented and received his grace. The psalmist says it this way in Psalm 66. You, want to, you may want to jot that down in your notes. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly, God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. When we draw near to God, confessing our sins, not cherishing our sins in our hearts, the Lord will not only hear us, but will draw us to himself and speak his precious word into our hearts. And he'll speak that word personally and progressively. Personally and progressively. But how can we know the, his voice from the voice of another? How can we discern his voice from that of a counterfeit spirit or, 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 or seek to that would seek to lead us astray? Or how can we know his voice over our own fickle hearts which seek a different path than the Lord? Well, I have found the more I know myself and the way I think and the way I act, the more I can recognize the Lord's voice that's very different from my own. <laughs> yeah, you can hear yourself saying, okay, this is what I feel, this is what I want to do, this is what I think I should do, and Bam, the Lord gives us another, I said, well, that's different. That's not what I was thinking. That was, that was, that's not me speaking. That, 
I recognize is God speaking me in that direction. And we'll talk more about that as we move through this. Well, the Bible is filled with hundreds of examples. God speaks to his chosen people, even to those who don't even know him yet. Exodus 3, God speaks to Moses from a burning bush, telling Moses to take off his sandals for the ground he's standing as holy ground. He says he's the God of Moses' father. He's the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He has seen the affliction of his people who are in Egypt, and he's heard their cry. He knows their suffering. And Moses, I'm sending you back there. And you, through you, I will deliver my people and give them into a a new land flowing with milk and honey. Well, God speaks also through angels, his appointed trustworthy messengers. Perhaps some of you have an angel that has spoken to you, I don't know. But it wouldn't be the first time if you did. God speaks through prophets, mouthpieces of his who speak forth his word to his people. God speaks through dreams and through visions. Uh, We see that in King Nebuchadnezzar to Daniel and to Joseph and the Apostle Peter and others. He speaks through his still small voice, through preachers who speak forth his life-giving word, through signs and wonders and miracles and supernatural events, like the handwriting on the wall by Belshazzar. Can you imagine, Lord, just speak to me. And this hand appears and writes on the wall. It's like, that's pretty clear. That's very clear. Well, it was, uh, it was a hand of judgment for sure. Well, God speaks through thunder and lightning. He speaks to Job out of the whirlwind. He speaks to the wayward prophet Balaam in Numbers 22 through his donkey. I don't know if any of you, God's spoken to you through one of your livestock, but it wouldn't be the first time. God has done these extraordinary things. He speaks through nature. He speaks through extraordinary and ordinary circumstances. He speaks to us through people, through pain, through loss and failure, through service. Next week, we'll be looking at how God speaks to us through our active service in our community to others. Hebrews 1 tells us God speaks to us through his risen and ascended son, Jesus Christ. Well, in other words, God does not limit himself to speak to us exclusively through a single means or special formula, but he speaks to us through a variety of creative ways. And for this reason, as we take up this topical series on hearing and obeying the voice of God, we will not be adopting a certain method or formula that we rub our our magic lamps a certain way and say, abracadabra, God, speak to me. No, 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 we're not going down that way. And I've read books like that that says, okay, you want to hear God's voice? Do this, do this, do this, and guess what? God will speak. I say, wait a minute now. My God's a lot bigger than your formula. And uh, for us to kind of look at that, it, it goes down a very dangerous place. The series is all about cultivating a personal relationship with God. And then, over time, learning to hear and discern his voice from our own and from those of others. And not only hearing, but following him, following where he sends us, embracing all that he has to say to us as his beloved sons and daughters of the kingdom. Now, I've been told that a child in the womb at some point is capable of hearing the voice of their mother or father speaking to them. And upon birth, we'll recognize that voice. Well, we actually put that into practice. And Susan and I did, um, uh, most memorably, our firstborn and others, that I spoke words of hope and promise to our unborn children while they're in the womb. And when our firstborn was born into the, the world, the nurse midwife handed her to me and said, here is your bundle of joy. I say, welcome her into the world with with words of love and hope and promise. She seemed to recognize my voice in a comforting way, in a familiar way. That here's a person who values me. I don't understand who this guy is, but I can sense that there is some, and she couldn't get her eyes off of me, and of course I couldn't get my eyes off of her. Well, as loved and valued as our parents make us feel, 
There's one who loves you and values you even more than your parents, and that is Jesus Christ. He values you even more than Jesus. He, he, he died for you. He calls you unto himself by name. He is the good shepherd. He loves the flock. He laid down his life for you on the cross. He rose up again from the dead. He gave you life eternal, everlasting, and said, no one be able to snatch you out of my hand. Jesus, the good shepherd, is God the Son. He's one with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. He made it very clear in John 10 that the more that you draw near to him in faith, confessing your sins and abiding in him, seeking and listening to him, the more you'll be able to hear and discern his voice speaking to you <coughs> as his beloved child. Well, a hundred years ago, before we had cell phones, in 1921, a Mr. Robinson was sent to meet an English pastor and theologian by the name of F.B. Meyer. All right, there's a picture of F.B. <clears throat> he went to pick him up at the Canadian National Railway Station in Montreal, Canada. Well, F.B. Meyer wrote over 75 books he, wrote, he worked with Evan Roberts in the great Welsh revival in the early 20th century. He's a well-known evangelist of, of the day, a, a contemporary, a good friend of D.L. Moody, evangelist from Chicago, actually born in Northfield, Massachusetts. And sure enough, there was FB, uh, Mr. Robinson was tasked to pick up F.B. Meyer at the Canadian National Railway Station. But he sensed that God saying to him, go instead to the Canadian Pacific Railway Station in Montreal. So he went to a different railway station than he was supposed to, as God was speaking to him. And sure enough, there was F.B. Meyer waiting for him. When he asked what had happened, F.B. Meyer simply said, I boarded the wrong train. And so I prayed, Heavenly Father, Please let Mr. Robinson know he needs to go to a different train station to pick me up. And he spoke to you, and here we are. Let's go on our way. God cares about the details in our life. Even if we miss a train, that someone can come to the right train station. Isn't that remarkable? The question is, are we listening are we listening to what God is saying to us? He cares about all the details in our life. And so this, this process of, of following God, we need to draw near to him and listen to him and to follow him. God cares about us. He desires an intimate, personal relationship with us. And he will speak to us if we'll take the time to listen to his voice. In other words, communication is essential to a relationship. How many would you would agree with that statement? To have a good relationship with someone, some of you don't agree with that. All right. You need good communication. Both hands up for Jane. All right, I, I'm with you. All right, Debbie's got both hands up. All right, good. You know, to have a relationship with someone, you have to have good communication. You need to, need to talk. You need to listen. You need to speak. You need to stop speaking. You need to, you know... Communicate with a person where you're coming from and what you're thinking, what you're feeling. Well, the same thing is true in a relationship with the Lord. God says this, Jeremiah 33, 3, Call to me, I will answer you. will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. When God speaks to us, it's always consistent with his character. God is holy. So he'll never speak to you in an unholy manner. If you hear a voice, you have a thought, it's an, un, it's an unholy thought, it's an unholy idea, it, it's this feeling like God is calling you to do something wrong or immoral, guess what? It's not God. It's not the Lord who's speaking to you. Because he'll never speak to you in an unholy manner. God always speaks the truth in love. He'll never lie to you. He'll never lead you to a lies. Even the most severe warnings and rebukes that he communicates 
are always spoken in perfect love. And he invites us to call to him. He will answer us with great and hidden things that you have not known. What a promise that is. Call to me, I will answer you with great and hidden things that you have not known. And so when he speaks, he calls us to respond in faith, trusting fully in him. I remember some time ago when our children were small, Susan and I took them to a playland uh, in near Thompson, Connecticut, McDonald's Playland. Uh, we promised them a happy meal after they played on the slides and the balls and other things like that. Well, as Susan and I kept our eyes on our children, making sure they were safe and they weren't whipping balls at each other and no one was grabbing them or t snatching them away, uh, we took our eyes off of her purse, which was left on the table. Well, as we, we, it was time to, to, to get the dinner, uh, the money we put aside was in her purse, and Susan said to me, if I remember right, my purse is missing, and thinking like, well, maybe it's left in the car, you know, maybe it's under the table, uh, something like, no, I brought it in here, it was right here, it's missing. I said, well, maybe it was stolen. So I went to the, the manager of, of uh, McDonald's and said, so you got a camera there. Can I look at the camera to see uh, perhaps who stole my wife's purse? And the manager said, I'm sorry, but that camera is not working, so we can't really help you out with that. I went, okay. Well, the kids were playing, and they had no idea what was going on with mom and dad, and that's sometimes a good thing. Well, they got hungry, and they said, you know, we're hungry. Can we have our Happy Meal yet? Well, we had no money, because the money that we had was in the purse, and the purse was gone. So I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And I felt the Lord, I sensed the Lord saying to me, just get in line at McDonald's, and I'll provide for you. And I went, okay, how's this going to work? Just get in line. And sometimes when the Lord speaks to us, he speaks progressively and says, okay, here's the first step, do this. More instructions will follow. So I went, all right. So I got in line, and uh, not sure what Susan thought at the time, but uh, there I was, without any money, in line, ready to order my food for the kids. And they were waiting for this. And I got closer and closer and said, well, Lord, I'm still here. I'm still here. How far are we going to take this? And then we kept on going. And right as I got up to the counter, a man came up to me, handed me some money, and said, here, take this money to feed the kids. I said, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So I took that, ordered the Happy Meals, gave him the cash, brought it over to the kids, Kids had a great meal, they enjoyed it, back to playing. They didn't really know about what had happened. But God spoke. He cares about the details of our life. Well, a few weeks later, we had a knock at the door, and there's a man standing there in his fishing gear and said, you know, I found this purse in the river, and it's got your, your, your license plate on it. Is this your purse? And Susan says, yeah, that's my purse. And he said, well, I was fishing, and I, I hooked this purse, and I brought it in. So he said, all right. We opened it up. Of course, the money was gone. The cash was gone. And, but, you know, there was her license and some photographs that were all waterlogged and, and some credit cards and things. And, and so God showed us clearly that that purse was stolen. A person grabbed it. They got the cash and tossed it in the river. We... I didn't need to know what happened, but God in his grace said, I want you to know that that purse was stolen, and I provided for you. Well, God cares for us, and sometimes we don't understand what's happening, but we just need to, in faith, do something that he calls us to do if we're listening to him. When God speaks, it's always consistent with his holy word breathed out in Scripture. 
God will never lead people to act in ways which are contrary to what he has said in the Bible. For example, for example God will never tell you to cheat on your taxes or steal from your company so you have more money for your family or more money for missions. He'll never do that. He'll never do that. Why? Because he says you shall not steal. When God speaks to us, he'll give us fresh applications of his word in our lives. But he'll not speak to us new revelations which supersede or eclipse his holy word which he inspired and preserves. So a person says, I, I got this new revelation from God. And I, you know, it supersedes what the Bible says because this is, this is the latest and the greatest revelation. I say, no, that's not from God. He'll give fresh applications, but not new revelations which <coughs> eclipse his word. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, I'm the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. The sheep did not listen to them. I'm the door. If anyone enters by me, he'll be saved. I'll go in and, and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life, have it abundantly. I'm the good shepherd. Good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice. So there'll be one flock and one shepherd. The Lord wants us to listen to his voice and follow him. His flock is not only those believing Jews, but believing Gentiles as well. Oh, listen to his voice. And when we follow him together as one flock, he leads us in the path of righteousness, places of provision and abundance. He leads us and provides for us eternal life as we put our faith in him. He leads us to places where we can trust in him. When he speaks, Hebrews 3 says, Exhort one another every day as long as it's called today. None of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, for we have come to share in Christ if indeed we, if we hold our original confidence firm to the end, as it is said today. If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. When you hear the voice of God, don't harden your vo hearts against him. Sometimes we can hear the voice of God and say, I don't want to listen to you anymore. I don't want to hear what you have to say. I am so burnt. I am so upset. I am so distraught over the, how things have turned out in my life or my situation that I don't want to listen to you anymore. Don't let sin harden you to hear the Lord's voice. When we hear his voice, may we say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way, because that is the pathway of blessing for me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we stand amazed that you not only care about the details of our lives, but you have called us unto yourself by name. And you want to speak to us. Speak to us through your word, through circumstances, through people, through nature through many different means that you have chosen, through the still small voice calling us to, to trust in you and to obey, to follow you. Lord, give us listening ears as your people and obedient hearts. And thank you for this journey that we're on the rest of our days on this earth of hearing your voice and obeying you. Help us to really discern your voice from all the other voices in our heads and in our hearts and in the world. Help us to take time to be still before you and know that you're God, to know that you want to speak to us. And we thank you, Lord, for that relationship we have with you. We pray for communication, that we would listen and speak and act and follow you. In your name we pray.
Amen.
in heaven, seen and unseen, rulers, dominions, and powers and kings. He holds all things, all things, all things together. He holds. Next week, we'll be looking at our second message, God Speaks to Us Through Loving and Serving Others. After you are involved in your love project, I encourage you, when you get home, after you get a shower and get cleaned up and change your clothes and whatever you need to do after your love project, get out this journal and write some things down that God is showing you through your service through your service and watching the service of others. I learned, I hear God speak to me so much through other people and watching how God, God speaks to me by watching their lives and see the, their, their lives and say, Lord, you're, you're an amazing God. Write it down. There's lots of space for you to write down. So it's not just for writing sermon notes. That's part of it. But it's also throughout the week as God is speaking to you. And then next, the following week, Mother's Day, remind me if I forget, because I, I, I do that. I want to have at least 10 minutes of testimony from you, from the Love Project, on how God spoke to you through your service. Wouldn't that be awesome? So if it's not in the program and you say, Pastor David, I remember back in the service, well, they didn't say that at 8 o'clock. No, I didn't, but I said it here now. We'll do it, all right? Bring it, bring your journals, bring your 
write some things and how God spoke to you through your service or the service of others, this will be to his glory. I'll receive now the benediction. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and all those whom you love. In Jesus' name, amen.